the message of today is taken from the two lessons that were read to us. The first lesson, the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 26, verse 1 to 11. And the second lesson, the book of Galatians, chapter 6, from verse, verses 5 to 11. Hallelujah. 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 As Christians, at some point in our lives, we all go through one situation or the other. And depending on what we're going through, we'll come to God, we'll pray, 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 God, if you do this for me, I will do this for you. But there's something very important that our Lord wants us to understand today. Is that when he has answered your prayers, when he has answered my prayers, there are certain things he expects of us as Christians. This brings us to the first lesson, Deuteronomy 26. And it shall be. Read from verse 6, please. And the Egyptians, and the Egyptians evil and entreated us. Yes. And afflicted us. And afflicted us. And laid upon us hard bondage. And laid upon us hard bondage. Not just any kind of bondage, but hard bondage bondage yes and when we cried unto the lord and when we cried unto the lord the lord god of our fathers the lord god of our fathers the lord heard our voice the lord heard our voice and looked on our slow fortune. down one second they afflicted us with hard bondage does anyone understand what the word bondage means bondage is when you are in a place where you can't make choices for yourself you can't move forward, you cannot move backwards. You can't move to the left, you can't move to the right. It's as if you are chained and you are in a dark place. Go ahead. The Lord heard our voice. It says, the Lord heard our voice. Yes. And looked on our affliction. And the Lord looked on our affliction. And our labor. Yes. And our oppression. And our oppression. And the Lord brought us forth out of Egypt. He says, and the Lord brought us forth out of Egypt. With a mighty hand. Not just with a regular hand, with a mighty hand. And with an outstretched arm. And with an outstretched arm. And with great terribleness. Yes. And with signs. And with signs. And with wonders. And with wonders. Hold on one second. So we are praying, 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 praying. God, do this for me. God, I want a new job. God, I'm looking for a spouse. Financial blessings. Spiritual power, progress, victory, protection. Now you have prayed. And the Bible says, God heard your voice. And he brought you out with an outstretched hand. Yes, go ahead. And he hath brought us into this place. And he hath brought us into this place. And hath given us this land. And has given us a land. Even a land that floweth with milk and honey. A land that floweth with milk and honey. Thank you very much. God bless you. Amen. A land that floweth with milk and with honey. I know this is not the first time we're hearing or we're reading that verse in the Bible. A lot of times when we pray, God, take me to a land that flows with milk and honey. But the message of today, to you and I, that land flowing with milk and honey is not a physical location. It is not when God takes you from a third world country and brings you to a developing country that you feel you are now in a land flowing with milk and honey. It is not when you are living in a neighborhood that is filled with violence, drugs, all sorts, and you now move to a gated community like somewhere in Hollywood, then are you now in a land flowing with milk and honey? Children of God, it's not when your finances increase or your social status increases, they are now in a land flowing with milk and honey. Where is this land flowing with milk and honey? If it's not the physical, then where is the land? Children of God, that land flowing with milk and with honey is that Christian that is free from bondage. That land flowing with milk and honey is that Christian whose heart is filled with the presence and the power of God. Am I making sense? Yes. So let's get it straight. Yes, we pray. We were once in bondage at some point. 
if you are still in bondage, in short, by the grace of God, none of us is in bondage in Jesus' name. Amen. But think about a time in your life when you were seeking something from God. It could be a job, it could be anything. And God answered your prayers. And God set you free from those forces of darkness. And God set you free from all those troubles you are going through. And he now brings you into a land flowing with milk and honey. Don't get it wrong. It's not until your bank account is overflowing or everything in the physical seems good. But like I said, that land is the heart of a Christian that is filled with the presence and the power of the Almighty God. There are three points the Lord wants us to take from today's messages. The first point is that heart that is filled with His presence. That heart that is filled with His power has to be filled with the worship of God. Deuteronomy 26 10. The same first now, lesson. Yes. Behold, yes. I have brought the first fruits of the land okay. which thou, O Lord, has given me. He says, I have brought the first fruits of the land which thou, O Lord, has given me. Yes. And thou shalt set it before the Lord thy God. Set it before the Lord your God. And worship before the Lord thy God. And worship before the Lord your God. Worship before the Lord your God. When God has given you that thing you are looking for, it could be anything. He wants you to come into his presence and worship him. He wants you to he wants your heart to be filled with his worship at all times. Children of God, worshiping God is not only when you come to the sanctuary. Your worship unto God starts in your home. Your worship unto God starts in your neighborhood. Your worship unto God starts in your office place. Your worship unto God starts with every individual, every human being you meet. I was talking to somebody a few days ago and I was explaining to the person how in Nigeria or in Africa in general, if you're a Celestian, when you're going to church, you put on your, 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 your sultana, you wear your regalia, you know, regardless of the rank. I said, can you imagine sometimes even those who have the, the, the more senior ranks, you, you wear your sultana, you tie your loin. You wear your coat, you tie, your, you tie another loin. You wear the... Castle, Castle, and you put another loin. I said, imagine. Then you now start walking barefoot to the church. I said, some of them will even have to take public transportation. And the person said, wow. And you mean some people will do all that, and they will still go to church and not focus on their service. After wearing all that regalia, after working, <laughs> walking barefoot. So you now go to church, and you don't focus on your service. I said, well, unfortunately, the mission of some is to come and destroy. So regardless of what regalia they're wearing, regardless of if they wear shoes or not on their satanas, that's their mission. But as a Christian, before you leave your house, that is when your worship starts. If your worship is to come and seek vengeance to the person that upset you last week Sunday, then you've lost it. Your worship starts from your house. From the moment you decide, I'm going to church today to worship the Almighty God, I'm going to serve, I'm going to praise Him, that is when your worship starts. Your worship, my worship, is in the way we treat our neighbors. Whether it's in your community, whether it's at your place of work, whether it's at the grocery store, whether it's that person that cuts you off while you're driving. The way you treat your fellow human being, that is your worship unto God. The interesting thing about being in any sanctuary is that we are all programmed to act a certain way. So when you come into church, oh, God bless you, my God. Are you saying the same things to your neighbors? When your neighbor spills something in your grass, are you saying God bless you to your neighbor? When that person cuts you off while you are driving, are you saying God bless you to them? When your colleagues treat you in a way that you know is not right, are you saying God bless you to them? But we come to the house of God. Oh, God bless you. Oh, how are you? Well, I'm fine. All sorts of... May God have mercy upon us. Amen. Isaiah 66, verse 23. And it, shall come to pass and it shall come to pass that from one 
new moon to another that from one new moon to another and from one sabbath to another and from one sabbath to another shall all flesh come to worship before me shall all flesh come to worship before me say the lord say the lord revelation 14 what does it say verse 6 And I saw another angel fly. I saw another angel flying. In the midst of heaven. Yes. Happened the everlasting gospel to preach unto them okay. that dwell on the earth. Yes. And to every nation. Yes. And kindred. Yes. And tongue. Yes. And people. Yes. Saying. Saying. With a loud voice. With a loud voice. Fear God. Fear God. And give glory to Him. Give glory to Him. For the hour of His judgment is come. Yes. And worship Him. And worship Him. And men heaven and earth. God bless you. Worship him that made the heavens and the earth. Create time to worship God. God, he, he, he blesses us so much in so many ways that we, we, a lot of times we forget and we think it's by our own power, we think it's by our own might. But we forget when we were crying unto, unto God. Worship him wholeheartedly. Worship the God that created the heavens and the earth. Use your talent to worship God. Use all that he has given you to worship him. If it's your finances, use it to worship him. Bring it to the house of the Lord and let it be used for the glory of, the God, uh, uh, of God. If he has blessed you with administrative skills, bring it, let's use it in the house of the, uh, of the Lord. If he has blessed you with the talents to be able to sing, come to the house of the Lord and praise him. Worship him with everything you have. Worship God with everything you have. The God that created the heavens, the God that created the earth, the God that created you, that created me, worship him. He's not telling us not to take care of our physical needs, but create time to worship him. When you're at home, when you're in the bathroom, worship him. When you wake up first thing in the morning, worship him. Because it's not by our power, it's not by our, by our might that we are awake. It's not because of the alarm clock we have. How many times do you set your alarm clock for, let's say, 5 a.m.? Are you oh, past 7, I'm late for work. Or you wake up even before the alarm goes off. Like some preacher said, he said if you want to know how, if you really, really want to believe that your alarm clock has nothing to do with, with, with waking you up, he said take it to the graveyard and go and put it there. And let it go off and see who will wake up. So the fact that you and I are alive this morning, the fact that we can see, we can breathe, we can hear, we can raise our hands, we can raise our legs. We are not being controlled by any machine. That's enough reason to worship the Almighty God. The second point, give thanks unto God. The same first lesson from verse 1. And it shall be, yes. when thou art come in unto the land, which the Lord thy God giveth thee okay. for an inheritance yes. and possess it yes. and dwellest therein. Yes. Th that thou shalt take of the first of all the fruits of the earth. He says, take the first of all the fruits of your basket, yes? Which thou shalt bring of thy land yes. that the Lord thy God giveth thee okay. and shall put it in a basket yes. and shall go unto the place which the Lord thy God shall choose yes. to place his name there. Yes. And thou shalt go unto the priest okay. that shall be in those days yes. and say unto him, yes. I profess this day unto the Lord thy God yes. that I am come unto the country yes. which the Lord swore unto our fathers for to give us. Yes. And the priest shall take the basket out of thine hand yes. and set it down before the altar of the Lord thy God. Yes. And thou shalt speak and say before the Lord thy God, Okay. A Syrian Thank you. Let's go to sorry, let's go to uh, Psalm 18, verse 46 to 49. Psalm 18, 46 to 49. The Lord liveth. Yes. And blessed be my rock. The Lord liveth and blessed be my, my rock. Yes. And let and let the the God of my salvation be exalted. Yes. It is God that avengeth me. Yes. And subdueth the people under me. It is God that avengeth me. Yes. And subdueth people under me. So remember that time you were praying. Pray, 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 pray. God, hearken unto my prayers. The, the Bible is telling us that it is God that granted us victory. Mm -hmm. It is not by our own power. Mm -hmm. It is not by our own might. Mm -hmm. It is not who we know. Yes, go ahead. He delivereth me from mine enemies. He delivers me from my enemies. Yes. Yay. Yes. Thou liftest me up above those that rise up against me. Yes. 
Thou hast delivered me from the violent he man. He says, He delivered me from the violent man. As Christians, like I said earlier on, we all go through one situation or another where the enemy is constant, constantly attacking us. Where we're in bondage. Mm -hmm. Where we sleep, we're dreaming that, that you're falling, you just wake up. Mm -hmm. They do all sorts. They attack our jobs. They attack our family members. They attack our health. They attack our, our reason. Everything about us, the enemy will attack. But the word of God is telling you and I today that it is only God that grant us vi granted us victory for tonight of that same song. Therefore will the I give thanks unto thee. Therefore will I give thanks unto thee. O Lord, amongst, among the heathen. Thank you. God bless you. Amen. Give thanks unto the Lord. When God has done it for you, even if he hasn't done it for you, give thanks unto him. He said, the Bible says, in all things we should make our requests known unto God with prayer and thanksgiving. Thank God for who you are today. Thank God for the fact that you are alive today. Thank God for the fact that you can breathe today. Thank God for the fact that you can even come to his house of worship and worship him. Thank God for the fact that you have food to eat. If it's wisdom, if it's knowledge, if it's understanding, if it's a particular skill, bring it to the house of the Lord and use it to thank him. Go out and look for those who are hungry. Go out and look for the needy. And as a means, give thanks unto God. God, because you have done this today, this person I see walking on the road, I know there's no doubt they're hungry. Let me give them something to eat. Let me give them something to drink. This person who is going through this situation, let me go and assist them. That's a way of giving thanks to God. Don't wait until, until your neighbors come and cry out to you, oh, I'm in this situation, oh, I'm in that situation. There are some people you can just look at them and study them and you understand that this person is going through something. Don't wait for them to, be, be, don't, don't wait for them to ask you for something. Offer your help. Give thanks unto God. God, because I'm in a sound frame, frame of mind, I can see this person is doing this wrong. Let me, let me offer advice unto them. It's not by our own power or might that we can even reason right. Because of that anointing on us, because we have been taken to that place, flowing with milk and honey. Like I said earlier on, that place is not necessarily physical. It's your heart. The Bible says, who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? Or who shall stand in his holy place? He that had clean hands and a pure heart, who has not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully. When God comes to look for you and I, he doesn't care what country you live in. He doesn't care if you live in a third world country or if you live in a developed country. He doesn't care what neighborhood you live in. He doesn't care about your finances. He doesn't care what you have in your bank account. But brothers and sisters in the Lord, when the Lord comes to look for you, he looks at your heart. Are you giving thanks? Is this my child giving thanks for what I have done for him or her? Is this child worshipping me with all their power, with all their soul, with all their might? May God help us. Amen. And the third point, God wants us to do good. Galatians, second lesson. From verse six, from verse, Galatians 6, verse 9. And let us not be weary. Yes. And let us not be weary in doing well. Do not get tired of doing good. Yes. For in due season, For in due season we shall reap. We shall reap. If we faint not. Yes. As we have therefore, as we, and as we have therefore opportunity every opportunity you have no matter how small it is yes let us do good unto all men do good unto all men especially unto them who are of the household especially of faith. thank you especially unto the household of god when you have that opportunity do good don't worry about what the person is going to do with your time or do with your money or do with the food that you provide for them as you have the opportunity do good because not everyone has that opportunity to do good. There are some people around us in our neighborhoods, in our communities, in different parts of the world. All you need to do is see where they sleep. And that is more than enough reason for you to say, no, I must do good to this person. I must do something to get them out of that situation. No matter how small. Nothing is ever too small in the eyes of God. Do good, especially to those around you. Don't do evil. May God help us. Amen. Romans 12, from verse 9. <coughs> Romans 12. And David said, oh, Romans 12, verse 9. Let love be without dissimulation. Yes. 
Abort that which is evil. Yes. Cleave to that which is good. It says cleave unto that which is good. Run away from evil. Yes. Be kindly affectioned one to another. Be with, kindly affectioned one to another. Yes. With brotherly love. Yes. In honor preferring one another. Yes. Not slothful in business. Yes. Fervent in spirit. Fervent in spirit. Serving the Lord. Serving the Lord. Rejoicing in hope. Yes. Patient in tribulation. Patient in tribulation. Like I said, it, it, hold on one second. We all go through tribulations. Mm -hmm. So, the moment God has transitioned you from that place of bondage to a land flowing with milk and honey, it doesn't mean everything is going to be rosy all through. We still have to serve God. We still have to give thanks. Even when Jesus Christ was tempted, after fasting 40 days and 40 nights, what did he say to the devil? In Matthew 4, 8 to 10. Hold, hold, please keep that uh, psalm open. Again, the devil yes. taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain. Now, this is after our Lord, our Savior Jesus Christ had been fasting for what? 40 days. Go ahead. And the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain. Yes. And showeth him all the kingdoms of the world. And he showed him the kingdom of the world. And the glory Slow down, of them. Slow down. He showed him the kingdom of the world. So when we are loose on bondage, that's not it. No matter how we worship, how much we worship God, no matter how much thanksgiving we do, the enemy is still going to come back to try us. We will be tried. We will be tested. And he said what? And said unto him, Yes. All these things will I give thee. All these things I will give you. Don't be deceived. Like I said, the enemy will come back and say, Oh, you are free now. When you are in bondage, you didn't have this car. When you are in bondage, you didn't have this house. When you are in bondage, your source of income was not this much. Let's go into fraud. I will give this to you. But what did Christ say? Then said Jesus unto him. Then Jesus said unto him. Get thee hence. Get thee behind me, Satan. Satan. Yes. For it is written. For it is written. Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God. The first and, point. And thou shalt worship the Lord thy God. Yes. And him only shalt thou serve. And him only shalt thou serve. May God help us. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. Uh, first Thessalonians 5. Uh, see that none render evil for evil. See that none renders evil for evil. But ever follow that which is good. Yes. Rejoice evermore. Yes. Pray without ceasing. Pray without ceasing. In everything give thanks. In everything give thanks. For yes. this is the will of God. For this is the will of God. Prove all things. Yes. Hold fast to that which is good. Yes. Abstain yes. from all appearance of evil. Yes. Thank you very much. Good, evil. May God help us. Amen. Please continue from Romans 12. Rejoicing in hope. Yes. Patient in tribulation. Yes. Continuing instant in prayer. Yes. Distributing to the necessity of faith, of yes. saints. Yes. Giving to hospitality. Yes. Bless them which persecute you. Bless them which persecute you. When people do evil for them, don't pay evil for evil. Bless them that persecute you. When they do evil unto you, do good unto them. Like Father and the Lord said last week, you have to be in, in, the life of a Christian to the world. We are like fools. Because just reason, just imagine, someone is doing evil to you, but you're doing good unto them. In the physical, does it make any kind of sense? Most times human beings will want to seek revenge. Yes, go ahead. Bless and curse not. He says, bless them and curse them not. Yes? Rejoice with them that do rejoice. Yes. And weep with them that weep. Rejoice with them that do rejoice. When you see someone is rejoicing about a situation, rejoice with them. Don't say, ah, God, you've not done mine, so I cannot rejoice. God, I've been waiting for you. I've been asking, even before this person started asking. But you've not done my own. You've done for the person. Rejoice with them. So at some point in time, they also will rejoice with you. So even people who don't know you will come and rejoice with you. Go ahead. Weep with them that weep. Weep with them that weep. Make other people's problems your problem. It might sound strange, right? Or he or she is going through that problem. But you never know how God is going to use you to, to solve that person's situation. Yes. Be of the same mind one toward another. Yes. 
Mind not high things, but condescend to men of low estate. Be not wise in your own conceits. Thank you very much. So we have heard. When God takes you into that land, don't start expecting unnecessarily or, or, or unnecessary physical things. It's not about the physical. It's about the heart. It's about your heart. It's about my heart. Worship God with all you have. When you're not in the sanctuary, worship God. Let everything about you be worshipped unto God. Even when people do you evil, worship God in that situation. Worship God by going out there and helping those who are in need. By helping those who are within the household of God. Worship God when you wake up. Thank Him for everything He has done for you. Praise His holy name at all times. Because the Bible says we are not fighting against flesh and blood. I'm not fighting against you. You are not fighting against me. But we are fighting against powers, principalities, rulers, authorities of darkness in high places. The way the Bible describes that is still amazes me. As evil as they are, they are in high places. So the goal is to get... The goal is not even to focus on, on witches or wizards. He says, they are in high places, powers of darkness. So when God sets you free from them, all he wants from you is to worship him with all you have. All he wants from you is to give thanks at all times. All he wants for us to do is do good to one another. Because again, when he comes looking, before he takes you to that next level, he will look at your heart. He won't look at your physical situation. Galatians 6, 7 to 8. Be not deceived. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, whatever you soweth, that shall he also reap. Hold on one second. Whatever you sow in your worship, whatever you sow in your thanks offering, whatever you sow in doing good to others, what does it say? That shall he also reap. That which, that is what you will reap. Go ahead. For he that soweth to the flesh. For he that soweth to the flesh. Shall of the flesh reap corruption. If everything about your sowing is for your for, for the flesh, is for your status, for people to say, oh, he or she is doing this. For people to say, oh, he goes to church every day. For people to say, oh, he's giving thanks, he's doing good. If you are sowing to the flesh, go ahead. He shall of the flesh reap corruption. Of the flesh shall reap corruption, yes? But he that soweth to the spirit. But he that sows to the spirit. And what is sowing to your spirit? Worship, your worship. Your thanks offering. You're doing good. And of the spirit he shall reap what? Shall reap life everlasting. He shall reap life everlasting. May God bless us. Amen.